Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the HVAC Diaries brought to you by New Calgon. Did you have a good week? It's March now, so that means springtime is just around the corner and I'm here for it. <laughs> Let's go on some HVAC adventures. I think my most exciting job this week for me was replacing a digital controller in a reach-in freezer at a pizza place. Speaking of pizza places, we actually visited a second pizza place, a more popular name. You guys are probably familiar with them. They have a prep cooler that we had to take a look at. We also had to look at a mini split system in a server room that was not cooling enough. One of the printer chillers that we service had an issue this week, so we had to go and deal with that. We looked at a bunch of water source heat pump units in that office building. One of them was in a medical office. One of them was in a law office. And the other one was in a lunch room. It was actually a fourth one that I was not involved with. So why even mention it? There was a fourth one. <laughs> cool. Also had a Women in HVAC Art Canada board meeting this week. Where we talked a lot about CMPX and our booth there. And we're all so excited. Also really excited this week, my stickers arrived for CMPX, so I'm totally all stocked up, ready to give those stickers out. <laughs> Look what came in the mail, you guys! Lots and lots of beautiful glitter stickers for CMPX. Oh, there's so many! Oh. <laughs> so if you're ready for some HVAC adventures, let's go! Heading to our first job, we're going to a pizza place. They have a reach-in freezer that is not getting cold enough. And when the guy called us, he told us that he had cleaned the condenser coil first. But we're just taking a look ourselves. When we opened the freezer doors, we noticed that the evaporator was a massive block of ice and the fans weren't running. When you open the doors, the door switches tell the fans to stop running. But here you can see my dad is just toggling that door switch on and off to see if they work, but the fans just wouldn't start. So we opened her up to investigate. And this should give you an idea of what it's like to work with your brother. Just need to get one more from you. No, we good. Yeah. <laughs> you don't look like you're, yeah. good. you're doing good. Oh, shit. <laughs> he is younger than me, but he always seems to win. Uh, Dad chose the perfect spot for me to miss the money shot. <laughs> okay, now with that cover removed, we can access the digital controller and do some testing on it. It seemed like power was going into the controller but not coming out of it. So it's not outputting from the controller. So Trev quickly rewired the controller to actually bypass the fan, well, make the fans run continuously, and we put it through a defrost when we went to grab a new controller. Sweet. Oh, we're gonna get another one to keep in the truck, right? Yeah, we should have a spare for both show. These controllers are super easy to set up. It basically self-programs de uh, depending on the unit and how many sensors. The thing about these controllers, so I've got the old one right here, it comes with these little white brackets on the side. So this is what kind of holds it in place, holds it upright on the unit. But also when you buy a new one, there's a little like information card that, that goes just right in there. And so these brackets hold that information card on. And so before you do anything, you have to get these little brackets off. And they are so freaking hard to get off. Oh, that one came off right easily. But you gotta push this little tab in and then push this up at the same time, which, oh fine, it worked easily there too. But I struggled so much with these things. 
and then while it was in place i had to get the, these brackets off the old one when it was in place and you can't turn it around and hold it and you can't do anything it's like it's it's there so that's all we have returned and there's a different staff person there now So I was lucky enough to replace this controller, but I started by jumping right in. And then as I was doing this, Trevor's like, you know, you really want to push that controller through and get all the wires through so that you don't get stuck like I've done before. So I took a photo of what I was looking at before anything else, got rid of that bracket, super easy peasy, but I had a bit of a fight with the other bracket. Persistence paid off. Ha. This way. Right there. Right here. Right here. We're gonna go on the side. I talk to myself a lot when I work. And I really did not like using this little screwdriver. Trevor has a screwdriver with a much thinner little tip on it and it works a lot better in these controllers. Okay, I've got all my lines and my loads all wired up. Okay. making sure all of my connections are solid and tight, just giving them all a little bit of a tug test. And then I can mount that controller. Now we can put it all back together. Then Trev powered me up while I programmed this controller. You have to program it within 60 seconds of power being applied to it. And voila, she's working and she's beautiful. Fans are on as well. Moving on to pizza place number two. These guys have a prep cooler that currently has a refrigerant leak. My dad and my brother were here last week they found the, the leak in the evaporator and we're just actually waiting for the new evaporator coil to arrive. In the meantime, we've come to top up this unit because this cooler is essential to their business operation. So we're just topping her up until that part arrives. However, this time we also noticed that the LP switch over there is intermittently faulty. So it's a combination of low refrigerant and a faulty LP switch, which we will replace when we have the system opened up when we're replacing the evaporator. Hopefully that'll be next week. This evaporator is unlike any I've ever seen before. So this is gonna be a really interesting job for me, although there's such limited space to work here. Here's a shot from the other side. Very interesting. Okay, we're all done with pizza places. On to the next one. This time we're going to a server room at an office. The server room is just too warm. They've got alarms in there that have been going off. So we did some checks. Just trying to get an idea of how much heat is coming off of these servers. My dad was moving around like a crazy person. But yeah, there's like 36 degrees coming off of those servers. So we ended up washing the filter, the washable filter. It's crazy because it doesn't seem like a whole lot of dirt and dust. Like you can still see right through that there's 
but it's pretty dirty. And that's all it takes sometimes, is that amount of dust to cause insufficient airflow. We couldn't really see anything wrong with the system from the inside, so I'm heading up onto the roof to take a look because we have a sneaky suspicion that the wind today, the really cold freezing wind is causing our problem and I'll show you guys why in a second. This ladder access is my favorite, this roof access ladder. Just listen to that wind. And here's our condensing unit, this little Samsung. So this is the outdoor unit from that server room. And a couple of years ago, a couple of years, is that long ago? I don't know. We had to add this wind baffle to the back, although this particular unit comes with both a front and a back baffle. And at the time they just had the back one, so we added it and it wasn't, it solved our problem at the time. But now, Oh, it's very windy. Now it appears that we're actually gonna need that front baffle as well, because we're having some problems in that server room. Anyway, so let's grab the model and cereal, and then we can order the other one of these. I just remember this thing being so expensive. Anyway. Okay, on to the next one. We're actually headed towards where that truck is going, to the packaging factory. They've got a chiller, a printer chiller that is not working right now. So we're just making our way through the factory, up the stairs, to the chiller. So if you notice the dial on the right hand side, that is our pressure difference in the internal water filter. We should have no pressure difference in there. So we're opening her up to investigate. Our water level is still full, so we don't have a water leak. We do suspect this internal water filter to be the problem. So we're just gonna take her off and take a look at that filter inside. This seems to be a very specialized water filter. We think you have to order them from the manufacturer, which comes from Spain. This one was really dirty. It was very difficult to see just because of the type of filter that it is, but it is pretty full. And just because we don't have any spares of these on hand, we're going to run this machine without the internal filter. We're just going to run it temporarily without it because there's still that filter on the left-hand side, there sort of by my head, that will still filter out a lot of the debris. So the thing with that printer chiller is you're probably like, didn't we see her do a maintenance on all of the printer chillers like a couple weeks ago? So how, how did that happen? How did that get missed? And... The reason is because that, that specific filter is an internal filter and unfortunately it's got, like you see, it's got a solid color house, housing so you can't see in it. And that's a part that gets changed every like three years or so. So it's not part of the regular maintenance inspections that we do because we can't see it. In order to be able to see it, we have to drain that filter housing in order to be able to open it. And in order to be able to do that, we have to shut down the chiller. And that means they have to shut down the printer, which means that they lose production and they're just not willing to do that on a regular basis. So unfortunately, that particular filter is dealt with more on a reactive basis than a proactive basis, just because of where it is. So we don't have to shut down the machine every time we go there and take a look at it. I mean, it's not the ideal situation because when it does go down, it does halt their production. Um, but that's just kind of the way that that particular unit is. Okay, we're going to the other side of town 
where we're going to look at a few water source heat pump units. The first of which is in a medical office. Oh, I don't care if you're talking about it. You want to put it on for me? <laughs> Kidding. Thanks. <laughs> All right, we're just getting this mask on my face. And it was really chilly that morning, so I had already overdressed, and then everyone left without me. So I gotta rush and catch up. Wait for me! It's always kind of interesting to me with the three of us walking through offices and job sites like this, especially because we are usually escorted by somebody. People are usually like, geez, how big is this problem? <laughs> So this heat pump just wasn't cooling. The ladies that work in this office say that the day before it was like a sauna in here. It just wasn't cooling. So we're here to investigate why. These units are always so wonderfully located with the best access. Luckily, I'm skinny and could fit through that tiny little ceiling tile. Okay, let's see what's going on. It's in memory, do you want me to... Is there a test? Yeah, there is. Whenever we find these units locked out, we can test them. They've got two little test pins on the control board that you touch together with a metal screwdriver or a jumper, and then it'll start to tick. And the number of ticks tells you which error code you're looking for. In this case, we've got two ticks, which is a high pressure event caused by a blocked filter. It's bad. It's very bad. It's very bad. So we're gonna reset this unit just by disconnecting the power to it for a minute or so, and then re-powering her up. Closing back up the panel and we're Dunsies. We're gonna stay in this building, but go to a different part of it, to a law office, where one of their little offices was too cold heating was not working so we're going to investigate once again this heat pumps location is quite tricky I have to literally stand on some filing cabinets and the first step was a little sketchy but once I was up there for a while it was totally comfortable no problem but take a look at the access of this panel and well in excess of this panel that's not a word I really did not think this panel was going to come off. I tried the top way, didn't work. I tried turning it sideways, didn't work. Tried all which ways. Just ridiculous. And then finally I was like, all right, let's, let's try this once again. Did not feel good. Just be careful you're done. Oh. I do not like that at all. This unit was also locked out when we got to it, so I did the same thing with the test pins, and we had an FP alarm, which is like a freeze protection, which is indicative of low refrigerant. So I'm just checking that now, and yes, we are low. So we're gonna do a charge and go, which is a no-no, but I'm gonna explain why we've done this in a little minute. And if you're from my Instagram and thought that I wouldn't be able to get this panel back on, look at me go. <laughs> I did it. So that particular water source heat pump unit is located in a law office and there are desks everywhere. Like there's, I'm literally standing on a, a filing cabinet right beside a lady's desk and she's working off really hard. And sometimes I forget that I am not alone in a ceiling space and I have some frustration sometimes and you got to just keep those to yourself. You can't swear while they're on the phone or while they're like writing an email or something like that. So you got to be very aware of your surroundings even though it feels like you're by yourself in that ceiling space. But so that unit, we topped it up without doing a leak test for two reasons. The first reason is that because you guys saw where that unit is located, it's impossible to access it. So doing a leak test on it would have been like for, for no reason. But second of all, we can't make any noise there. So our little leak detector makes this loud beep, beep, beep. And we just can't have that. So we topped her up to see how it would go 
and it actually dumped out its entire refrigerant charge overnight. So that means there's a big leak, a big sudden leak. It's not like the leak happened over time and it like slowly drained from its refrigerant. No, this is a massive leak. They've actually renovated a different part of their floor. So that whole section of stuff is moving from there to the new section in like two weeks time. So at that point, we'll have free reign there when there's no one working there anymore. We can drop that unit down, do a thorough leak inspection, find it, repair it, charge her up, and then send her back up. We're still in the same building. We're going to look at one more water source heat pump unit for this vlog anyway. And it's in a transportation brokerage office for their server room that is just too warm right now. So we're just doing a little bit of investigation. Yeah, it's pretty warm in here. I think it's like 23 degrees. Just checked on the thermostat. It should not be that warm. So Trevor's going to just open her up and take a look. And you'll never believe what we found. The unit's disconnect was turned off. <laughs> yep, easy peasy. This is the unit in question. It's a carrier, which is strange compared to a climate master. Trevor and I have one more stop before the weekend. We're gonna do one little service call to a juicery inside of the mall. They have got a freezer, like a reach-in freezer that has been dripping water onto the ground. So we assume that the little condensate tube has come out of its spot. So this is the freezer. We're gonna take a look. We usually will start by pulling off the front grill at the bottom because that's where the condensing unit is located and that's where the the condensate pipe will come out. However, when we had pulled the unit out, Trev noticed on the side a massive amount of ice buildup. It was really weird. It turns out that other unit is also a freezer and they're basically touching each other. So we've got this little puddle of water. It's a very small puddle. Uh, where is it? You can't even see it now. Oh, there it is in the back. And then we've got two freezers side by side, like really close to each other. So this nice. Fuck, oh, Jess, what are you doing? Don't swear so much. So, gosh, <laughs> and then the steam from this guy. So if they can move that over like two or three inches on that side and also maybe on this side. That is a serious chunk of ice. It was bloody sharp as well. We got rid of a few of those. And that's basically all that it was. Nice, quick, easy last job of the week. Well, you guys, that's all I have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the HVAC Diaries HVAC vlog. You guys know I love being here and making these videos for you to watch. So thanks for coming back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your comments. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. I already said that. <laughs> Why do I keep saying that again and again and again? <clears throat> Welcome to the HVAC Diaries. <laughs> cool. Why? <laughs> there. Ow.